Hello, YouTubers. It's Velocicula13 again. And I'm gonna cancel my toy ad. Because it turns out just a few seconds ago, I suck at it. Well, today, I'm just gonna get on with another rant, since that's basically my forte. I'm gonna do a full-length movie review called Yellow Submarine. It's about the Beatles, basically, but not at first. Well, it just starts with the peaceful land called Pepperland. And then they're suddenly attacked by these disgusting little monsters called the Blue Meanies. Once more into the Beach Fair Meanie. Yeah, the Blue Meanie was just in the room, but... I hired one of my bodyguards to push him out the window. <laughs> See? Well, um... So they interrupt all the peace by turning everyone into statues. And this one guy... This sailor guy called Old Fred manages to escape in his yellow submarine. On they just for some reason on top of a pyramid. I have to mention, this movie doesn't make any sense. But doesn't mean that it's bad. Let's continue then. So he manages to get into the actual sane world of world in a town called Liverpool, which is where the Beatles lived. Coincidence. And for, instead of just walking out of the submarine itself, he he just keeps following one, one of the first guys to be introduced, Ringo Starr. Oh, I have to mention that they're not actually voiced by, by the actual Beatles, they're voiced by other people. So, he keeps following him around, and then he manages to introduce himself and explain the dilemma. But Ringo is not convinced. But he takes him to his house anyway. And in the house, every time they open the door, it's a usual Scooby-Doo thing. There's a hallway, like five or six doors on each side. And every time they go through one, all these random things go in and out, in and out, in and out. And it scared me at first. So, um... And then they meet up with John. John Lennon. And they also encounter stuff like Frankenstein's monster... Uh, even a train is about to hit them as they open one of the doors. Then blah blah blah, more nonsense, and they meet up with George Harrison. Blah blah blah, even after another ten minutes, they finally meet Paul McCartney. So, um, they manage to get inside of the submarine. Blah blah blah, more nonsense. They go through the sea of monsters, the sea of holes, the sea of heads. But, well, somewhere before that they meet... They go, end up getting eaten by a monster, which ate it itself. And they meet up with the so-called Nowhere Man, Jeremy Hillary Boo, Ph.D. Yeah, he's sort of like this rodent thing with the head of a man. Add hot pad lock and quit pro quo. So little time, so, no, so much to know. That was just the riddle that he keeps reciting. Or poem. Since... Oh yeah, and also, one of the Beatles admitted that he has terrible poetry. Well, that thing is just creepy. But, he has, he's oblivious to the fact that he's all alone. Or well, maybe he knows that he's all alone, he's just not, uh, he's just optimistic all the time. Then the Beatles sing their song, Nowhere Man. Which finally makes him cry. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> And the Beatles decide to leave him behind, maybe except Ringo, who decides to take him. Jeez, that's pretty inconsiderate. The Beatles, these peace-loving, one of the greatest bands of all time, well, not of all time, maybe just the 1960s, being, but them actually being inconsiderate, which is pretty out of character. So they take him... And he manages to fix the motor of the broken submarine. Then they go through the sea of holes, sea of heads, and all that. Or they're saying Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Which, I wouldn't recommend a little kid to see. It's pretty bizarre. And, also, when they make it to the sea of holes, one of the blue meanies captures Jeremy. Oh! No! Yes! No! Yes, Jeremy, you were kidnapped. I was not. I deny everything. Shut up. Yeah. Well, anyway, they... I have to study, so let me go. 
So they keep moving on. They decide not to waste time. Then they finally make it to Pepperland, where they realize that all of Pepperland is just statues crying that are at this cry. So the solution, they just hide out at night inside of this old house where they get all these all this attire and instruments by Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. <coughs> oh, not to mention one of the clowns scream like that. <coughs> and I read a response to one of the parts and it said, Scariest alarm clock ever. <coughs> so anyway, they escape from the clutches of the Bluenies and they play music of course, appropriately you now, Sergeant Pepper's own Hearts Club Band. And the leader of the Blue Meanies goes insane. He ends up hugging, running, shooting his own military consultant slash right-hand man. And... They decide to go off for revenge, blah blah blah. And how the, sh how the movie concludes, I'm not telling. Watch it for yourself. It's uploaded on YouTube. I'm sure that there'll be a link. So, my full opinion, overall... Well, I'd have to rate it good. It's a good movie, because it has a peace message to it. No violence at, at all. But, they do a pretty much strange way of showing it. Showing all this bizarre stuff. Flying fish. Squawking birds that come out of nowhere. Trees that grow out of the top of the heads of people. And... Butterfly stompers? So... So yeah, the movie's overall good. At least it's better than Captain Planet. Well, I'd rate that show... It's somewhere between bad and okay. By, by your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! More like Captain Douchebag. Well, they do an odd way of showing. The power is yours! Well, next, I guess, I'll review... Oh, yeah. I gotta review something epic. And it starts with a G and ends with an A. I'm Velocity Killer 13, and don't you forget it. I'll see you later. Adieu.